Property prices have fallen for the fifth month in a row, and prices are now 3.2% below the peak they hit last August. But the big question is, what happens next? Rye move data paints a cheerier picture, showing that asking prices increased in January. These are only asking prices, which doesn't mean they're going to be achieved. Maybe there's just too much New Year's optimism and these sellers will be forced to accept the realities of the market later on. But we'll see. They will at least find that buyers are back in the market, with HomeTrack reporting that demand has picked up compared to the dead market we had in December. Buyer demand is now matching the pre-pandemic norm, which shows that mortgage rates and talk of recession have thoroughly killed off the post-pandemic boom. But so far, they've only taken activity levels back down to what was previously normal. There are three other really interesting points from the same report. But first, if you want to join 70,000 other investors in getting all the essential property news in one short email every Friday, sign up for our free newsletter, Property Pulse, at propertyhub.net slash pulse. Anyway, back to the three points from that home track report. Firstly, the gap between asking prices and actual sale prices is holding steady at 3-4%. to This will be a key number to watch in the coming months, because if it widens, it'll put downward pressure on those asking prices that Rightmove were reporting on. Secondly, flats are in high demand, with 27% of buyers looking for one and two bedroom flats, compared to 22% a year ago. You could put this down to the return to the office, or concerns around energy prices, or other factors, but regardless of the cause, it supports something that we said in our predictions earlier in the year, which is that there's always lots of talk about the average, but this year in particular, the type of property you buy and the area you buy it in could differ greatly from the average. And thirdly, they reckon it'll be a slow start to 2023, which will pick up in the second quarter onwards, which again echoes our predictions. Will that play out? We'll see, but we know that a big factor is going to be interest rates. And as expected, the Bank of England increased the base rate from 3.5% to 4%. That's probably the last of the big rises now, with at most another couple of quarter point rises before it peaks at what's predicted to be 4.5% in the summer, before falling back down again later. That's good news for mortgages, where a price war is getting underway. Lenders are now keen to lend again, but with less demand in the market, there's now less business out there for them. So rates are now coming down as lenders start to compete with each other. As I explained in this video, fixed rate mortgages are priced based off future expectations, which is why mortgage rates are coming down despite the base rate going up. The one thing that's going up at the moment is rents, which have hit another record level. Rents outside London now average £1,172 a month. And it's only very recently that they were comfortably under a thousand. Asking rents increased by 9.7% over 2022. And Rightmove records they'll go up by another 5% this year. Except that is in Scotland, where they can't. The Scottish government isn't letting their temporary winter rent freeze be derailed by anything as trivial as it being summer, choosing to extend their ability to cap rents until the 30th of September. But rather than being frozen at zero, they can now be increased by 3%. This is only for existing tenancies though and rents for new tenancies in Scotland are increasing faster than pretty much anywhere else in the UK. Why the proportion of Scottish investors buying in England has been rising so quickly is a mystery I guess we'll never solve. If you are brave enough to invest in Scotland, it does have among the highest yields in the UK, but we've also identified other areas that offer particularly strong returns. So watch this video next if you want to learn where to invest if you want to make your money go as far as possible.